What makes a spreadsheet look good is all a matter of opinion, right? Hmm. Well, I'm not so sure. I think there's things you can do to any Excel spreadsheet to make it look better. And in this video, I've got 14 more Excel formatting techniques to help you make Excel look beautiful. That's coming up in the next 10 minutes or so. But before we get started, I've got a free Excel data analysis mini course. It takes about an hour. These are the techniques I use instead of pivot tables to get the analysis I need in Excel. All you've got to do is put your email in. Uh, the link's in the video description below. You'll get access to our data analysis. Uh, mini course, and if we're meeting for the first time, a big welcome to Tiger Spreadsheet Solutions. I'm Chris Mortimer. I'm an Excel content creator, real-world consultant, and lecturer. I love bringing the powerful stuff in Excel to people like you. And if you haven't already, make sure you download the download file in the video description below and work along with me. So 14 more Excel formatting techniques. Firstly, this cell is classically indented. What do you think? How can we get this idea of indentation? Well, this column looks perfectly fine, but I'm going to go control shift down and then I'm going to hit this button here. And I've just got this indentation. I do like the indentation. A classy touch improves readability just a little bit. And if there's one column that you want to stand out, it's another way to make that data stand out. So what about using indentation? Second tip, formatting formally differently. Why would we want to format formally differently? Well, we can see in this cell, we have a formula. I can see in the formula, formula editing bar and the other cells, we don't have formulae. We'd want to format it differently, control shift down on the Windows PC, because we don't want anybody to overwrite that formula. So I will put a simple gray formatting behind the formula so people understand there's a form there's a formula there. Format formally differently. But what if you're saying, well, Chris, I need more than just different formatting. Can I actually protect this cell? Well, you might want to think about cell protection. Now to do that, which cells uh, do you want to protect? Well, you just go control shift down, select these cells, alt H O E on the Windows PC gets me into the formatting dialog box, or you can right click and then just go to format cells. Don't go to insert hyperlink, right, right click, and then format cells here. And then we wanna to go to protection. Now, cells that we don't want the user to be able to access, we wanna make sure that they, they are locked. So make sure locked is clicked there. And then cells that you do want the user to be able to access, you've gotta ensure that they're unlocked. So I'm gonna go ahead, highlight these, Alt H O E. I'm going to make sure those cells, which are input cells, are unlocked. I'm going to hit OK. Now, with cell protection, nothing happens until you protect the sheet. So, if we now go to review and protect the sheet, we want to make sure the user can select unlocked cells, but we don't want the user to select locked cells. So, you've got to just make sure this box is unclicked. You've got the option of putting a password in. Then we hit OK. So, how has that changed the behavior of the spreadsheet? Well, I can see these cells. I can still edit this cell. I can't even click. So we've managed to protect that formula. Now, there's pros and cons to cell protection. I don't actually use it very often at all for reasons I won't go into now. It might suit your situation if you need that extra level of security. What about formatting cells that have drop down menus in differently? Mm. So once again, control shift down, I'll select the cell. I'll just give it a subtly different format. So a light shading in a different color, blue could work for you. And it's just saying to people, you do something different with this cell. You're not typing in text. You've got an option to do something differently. And I do recommend in the header saying that you can select from a drop down here. How would you get that little bit of extra text? Well, this header, I want to say that it's a formula. So I've just clicked in the formula editing bar, held down alt and enter. Alt and enter is going to get me onto a new row. And then we can see we've got formula there. An additional tip here, if you want to make it absolutely clear there's a drop down menu, think about Alt A V V on the Windows PC. You can also go to data and uh, data validation, which is here. Are you using input messages? I do use these sometimes where there's something I want to really underline to the user. I'm going to say drop down and then I'm going to say select from list here. So you can put whatever text works best for you, something communicative and helpful. Now, if I select that cell, I automatically get an input message there. Is that going to be too much? Is that going to be just the right level of support that your user needs? You've got the option. 
it's up to you. What about using uppercase uh, for headers and particularly for column grouping? So as your data set builds up, and I work with data sets with hundreds of columns, literally 250, 300 columns, you might want to group these together. So try this. Firstly, we're going to deal with merging cells. I actually don't recommend merging cells. We did it in the first video. I'm going to unmerge these cells. I'm going to go Alt uh, H M U to unmerge the cells. You can click through the icons uh, if you want to, of course. And then I'm just going to change this fill color because clearly this, this looks a bit silly. But you could see in the previous video how we select how we created that that um, gradient effect. So the color scheme isn't so coherent now, but we don't have merged cells. That means if I select a column. It's now easy to select a column. So let's do this without merging cells. I'm just going to add some rows here. So Shift and Spacebar, Control Shift plus plus on the Windows PC. You, you know you can right click over here uh, to, to insert rows. Then we want to remove this formatting. So holding down the Shift key, using the arrows to select that, and Alt H E A. You can also go to um, Home and Format, and then you'll have an option somewhere here. Uh, to clear format. So got a little bit of room here. Now I recommend doing uh, this kind of thing. So these cells, they are grouped, they are related. It's the same theme and they are collecting basic information. So I recommend just above your data set there, again, some subtle formatting and then typing in something like, I'm going to say basic info here. And I do want to uh, make sure that this cell conforms with the basic formatting ideas that we've used already. So I do recommend Arial text. And then this can be even smaller than the basic text that you got in your column headers. So something like that. And then uh, Control B and Control I, you've got basic info there. And because I put it in the middle cell, Alt H A C would allow us to justify that centrally. Uh, you can see we managed to do that without merging cells. Also look at center across selection. But this is important. Maybe not so much if you've got four columns, but if you've got a big data set, grouping columns together uh, with that additional subheading above, that's going to support the user. It's all about supporting the user. And we learned right why merging cells is dangerous when we do that selection. Uh, it, it can be dangerous for a number of other reasons. So do that with care when you're merging cells. What about zoom level? Well, how many spreadsheets have you seen like this where you have different zoom levels? Zoom levels. I'm in the bottom right corner of Excel, adjusting the zoom level here. You go from one sheet to another just doesn't feel right. You're losing the flow. We should make so sure we have consistency of layout across sheets. That means having, broadly speaking, the same zoom level. You might say, well, Chris, it's so difficult at 100% zoom to display everything I need. I'm saying to you, you've got to get better prioritizing information. What do you really need on that spreadsheet? So you can work always, I recommend, at 100 zoom level across all of the sheets in the file. And if you want to implement a, a custom VBA-based navigation system, you can see how to do that on the channel. You absolutely have to have each sheet at the same zoom level. Now, a further point here, try on different monitors and screen resolutions. It's a little known fact that I do a lot of work for the channel, a lot of my VBA pro programming work on a 13-inch screen laptop. I just love the portability of the small laptop. So I've got very good at working with limited real estate. But what about you? Are you trying your spreadsheet on different monitors and screen resolutions? What's it going to look like to different users? And once again, it's so important to prioritize the information. Work from the top left. You can guarantee everybody's going to see the top left. The most important stuff should be in the top left, not over in the middle. So testing with different screen resolutions and different monitors. Next, consider conditional formatting, but manage it carefully. So let's go ahead and create a simple conditional formatting rule. Let's say we want to highlight the people who classify themselves as male. So I've selected the data, control shift down. I'm going to go to conditional formatting. You can also go Alt H L R to get you into the conditional formatting rules manager. I'm going to say new rule and then cell value equal to M. You don't need any uh, speech marks or anything here. You can just type in M. Then what's an appropriate format here? Well, I like reversing the colors. So we've got blue as our base color. I'm going to take a dark blue and then with white formatting on top. So we've got the concept of a color reverse. I've found it's a really simple way to get that nice formatting effect. Okay, 
pretty cool, I think. But one thing to bear in mind with conditional formatting, it's the number one source of spreadsheet inefficiency. So how do you stay on top of it? Alt-H-L-R on the Windows PC. Keep an eye on the conditional formatting rules manager. If you've got the same rule duplicated many times, which is easy to do if you delete rows or columns or copy formats around, something to look out for. We're going to talk about that in a second. Manage it all in the conditional formatting rules manager. You can see all of the rules for the whole file there. You can go to conditional formatting and manage rules, alt H L R on the Windows PC. What about reducing the number of zeros? How many zeros or how many decimal places do you actually need to see? Now, I've managed this by using this division. I've divided our figure by a thousand and I've made it very clear in the column header what this is this expresses. This is K, K for a thousand hit. So how many zeros is appropriate for you? Well, to illustrate this idea, let's go ahead and just remove that little division I've done. And you can see suddenly there's a lot of data in that cell. That's going to create cognitive load. The user has to interpret all of those zeros, all of those numbers. There's some nice options here. One number, one option is using a formula and doing that division, dividing by a thousand. That's my preferred option because it's simplest, but just try this trick. So go ahead, copy this notation here. Go back to these cells, Alt H O E on the Windows PC. You can also right click and format cells, of course. Now we're not in protection now. We want to go to number custom and then whatever's here, just go ahead and copy in Control V that notation there. Now what this is going to do, I'm going to hit OK now. What this is going to do, it controls the number of zeros. You can see the number of zeros reduced, and we've managed to recreate that idea of expressing thousands. Now, I've found my customers, particularly my what I call my high net worth individual customers, uh, the traders, the people who are really busy, really value their time. They love this. They love this clear information display. I'm going to go back to our original idea, uh, just using the formula. You've also got that nifty formatting uh, formatting technique. And you can play around with this format, Google it. You'll see you can get many, many different formats. And on this idea of simplicity, do we need the symbols? Hmm. Rather than repeating this pound symbol, why don't we just put it once? Pound, dollars, whatever currency you're using. Why don't we just repeat it once at the top then we don't need to repeat it each time. Again, unnecessary cognitive load. We want to simplify stuff you like working with in your life. It's always simple. Mm, how about that? So greater simplicity. We love that. What about forcing Excel to show decimal places? So what does this mean? Well, we've got our simplified format here. Exactly this situation here where we've got 96.4. This number is in the same order of magnitude as the numbers around it, but the shape of the number is different. Hmm. So the user's going to go there and think, oh, what's going on here? Even better example, we've got 107 here because the shape of the number is different. It's occupying a different space. So we want to force Excel to display the decimal places, even if the decimal is zero. So this is what I recommend, something like this. You just saw how I did it. Now we're saying 107.00. The shape of that number is the same. It's on the same order of magnitude. This is more intuitive, save cognitive load, support user understanding. That's all we're trying to do with formatting, guys. Now, build up a formatting store. Now, in my spreadsheets, fans of the channel will know this. In my files, I have generic sheet roles, Alt-O-H-R here. So I have the list sheet, the engine sheet. One of my sheet roles now is a format store. I store formats that I'm going to use through the file on the format store sheet. So for example, this nice subheading, I'm going to go control C and then just store it here. And I'm going to say subheading. And I have this, you know, for basic text, text um, within a data set, explanatory notes that I want to put around. There's six or seven different types of text you might include on your format store, but I just store it there. That makes it really easy. I can just go control C and let's suppose I want to replicate this formatting across these cells. I can go control alt V and T, obviously T for formats. You can see the T underline there, hit OK. So I can very quickly extract and recall a formatting scheme that I want into a particular cell and you can build up that format store and quickly copy the formats through. And then finally, something I've been doing more recently, controlling sheet tab colors. So that sheep, that sheep, there's no sheep in this video. The sheet that we just created, 
that format store, what's the role of that sheet? Well, I'd call it a supporting sheet, a supporting sheet. So the user doesn't need to see the sheet. So I'm going to format it. I'm going to say dark blue. So it has a different color. Now, that's important because the color is underlining the role of the sheet. And when I handed this over, over to the customer, I might right click and just hide that sheet. I'll just hide it because the customer doesn't need to see it. Now, I don't recommend using many, many colors down here, but just one or two colors to show the role of each sheet. That's what we want to do. And that's what we want to do with formatting, guys. The only role of formatting in Excel is to support user understanding, make your life easier make your user's life easier and following this these techniques i think we can achieve beauty in excel thanks so much for watching guys and remember if you want a full excel tra training course head over to the website check out our excel basics course and the next video to watch is in the pinned comment below this video i'll see you then